We're spending 22 minutes today with Diane Guerrero, star of Orange is the New Black, star of one of my favorite shows, Jane the Virgin, <laughs> and the author, co-author, I should say, along with um, Michelle Burford, of In the Country We Love. A great read, a great book, an amazing story. Okay. Tells the story of your parents being deported when you were a teenager. You know, when, when I was reading this, I said, this... It sounds like a movie. <laughs> is it going to be made into one? I don't. I don't know. I, I, one step at a time. I think this is <laughs> this was the first step, and it was a huge step for me. I, I did not expect this to come to fruition. I really. I mean, I always thought about, wow. I know I have an important story to tell, but I never really thought that this would happen. And I think that it just shows how many people can relate and how many people really are talking about this issue and how important this issue right now. Um, how important this issue is for our country right now. So mm -hmm. I think it, it's very relevant, and, and I'm glad to have the chance to tell my story. Yeah, and uh, all good stories have a good, a good setup, in a sense. Tell us a little bit about your life before your parents were deported. You paint such a vivid picture of, of a close-knit, loving family in, yeah. in the Boston area, right? Yeah, we, I grew up in Boston. Mm -hmm. um, we were you know, like any other family, I mean, with the same, some of the same troubles, some of the same happy moments. And, um, you know, we, my parents were desperately trying to um, become documented citizens of this country and, um, you know, tried very hard to, to get there, but to no avail. And so, therefore, we lived in a lot of fear because, you know, when you don't have um, your documents in this country, you are susceptible to deportation or to being separated from your yeah. family. My parents knew that very well, and they let me know about it at a very young age so that I could be prepared and uh, mentally and emotionally prepared. But, of course, no, <laughs> nothing ever prepares you for something like that. No, no way. Um, mm. But they, we were a very loving family, and, um, you know, we just, we, we had... Uh, some bad luck with some faulty lawyers, and um, unfortunately, we have a, a broken immigration system, an outdated system, and it would definitely didn't work mm. out for my parents. Now, you said that one of the big misconceptions is that people who were here illegally just don't care. Yeah. But your parents care deeply, and they, they tried very hard, but you, you're your dad was scared, too, at the yeah. same time that trying to go through the process would get him deported. Yes, yes. And yeah. that, that that's why I wrote the um, one of the reasons. I mean, I wrote the, re the book for many, many reasons. But one of the reasons was that, see, the misconception is that people who are here undocumented want to be undocumented. And that's simply not true. I mean, you can ask anybody who is in this country and has been working for in this country for a long time and has created a family here in this country, love this country very much, and so desperately want to be considered a part of it. Um, and another part of it is that people who are going through this are living in fear. And so because we're in such, so much fear, we don't make steps to really make the right decisions or make the steps or to reach out to organizations who are out there to help. And I just want to inform people on both sides of the issue. This is, this is not, I'm not doing it for... <laughs> I'm not just, I'm, I'm doing it for something bigger than myself. I want people to get informed, to educate themselves so that they can do something about their situation, so that they can go out there and participate in the community, so that they can vote, so that they can fight for the same thing because it's so important um, that for, for not just people who are undocumented and in the same situation as my family was, but for this whole country. Right. Take us to the day that you're, you came home to an empty house. Now, you, you had just had some good luck in your <laughs> life. You were accepted to this prestigious performing arts school, the Boston Academy, Boston right? Boston Arts Academy. Right, yeah. and you were happy there. Yes. And you came home one day. Describe that day when you came home, what the house was like, what it felt like. I mean, it was just out of one of my worst nightmares, right? I mean, you. You know, I mean, any, and I, I describe in the book, any time I called my parents and they didn't answer, or I couldn't find them, you know, I, I would get very nervous because this was always on the back of my mind. And so, of course, when I, I had a feeling, you know, and I, I walk into the house and it's dark and I, I see little telltale signs that, you know, my parents were there, but they're not responding, they're not answering me. So, yeah, it was just a very traumatic experience um, when I realized that, that they were gone. And, and so I knew that life as I known it, as I knew it, you know, was going to change. And I, and I had to really buckle up and take the next steps um, uh, for my own life. And um, 
and kind of go from there. You know, you had to do it. You you had a a, a quote um, uh, as part of the op-ed piece that you wrote for the LA Times, mm -hmm. right? Not a single person at any level of government took any note of me. Yeah. So there you were, your parents are gone. <laughs> yeah. So what happens, you, you wind up moving in with a, a friend's family, a, a couple yes. of different families ultimately, right? Two families um, who are so gracious and allowed me to stay with them. And I mean, that's the difference between me and a lot of cases, right? I mean, I was very fortunate to have these two families in my life who took me in and treated me like their own daughter. Um, but not a lot of people who go through what I, what I went through have this. There are a lot of kids who stay homeless with, with, with no, no one to, to supervise them, um, and they, they're left on the streets. And um, so, yeah, it was, it was kind of like no one really knew I existed. It was as if my family never existed. It was like, poof, we're gone. Um, and, and, this is, and, and this is why I'm... I'm I'm coming out with the story now because it's so important. Now, did you have the chance to go back to Colombia with your parents, right? But you didn't want to uproot your life in in America. Yeah, my parents gave me that choice um, because I had a, I had I had certain goals in mind, and and I knew that I had a lot of opportunity here in this country, and I didn't have much in Colombia because we were, you know, we lit we were literally left with not with nothing, and, and they left there for a reason. And they left right? there for a reason, right. right? We were not economically stable, and um, that was the reason why we came. Uh, my parents came to the United States in the first place, and um, and I was already in a, in a great school, and I, you know, the plan was to go to college, and the plan was to make something of myself, mm -hmm. and. Um, did they want very much for you to stay in those conversations, those visits? You had visits yeah. with them at detention centers in New Hampshire. Yeah. What, how did the conversations go? I think that because uh, my parents knew that I was just kind of a casualty in this whole thing, they, they felt I was mature enough to make that decision for myself. My mother, of course, and I talk about this in the book, wanted me so very much to get, go back with her. Mm -hmm. um, but I think ultimately I was very strong-willed and my choice was to stay and to follow my dreams and um, to, to one day <laughs> uh, bring my family together, put the pieces back together, and that was just my sole focus now. If I were to choose again, you know, who, I don't know what would have happened, um, but this is, it's, it was my decision, and, um, and here I am. Right, now they can never come back here, or could they? Is there the chance that you that you would be able to... Uh... Um, there's a chance, and I'm in the process now. I, oh. I, I've met some wonderful people, wonderful lawyers. Like I said, I, I've I've, I'm involved with some really great organizations who are guiding me and educating me and every day are sending me updates on what's happening uh, with the law and, and what opportunities my family may have. And so we're, re we're looking at the case right now and seeing what can be done. But, I mean, obviously it's my greatest dream to, you know, I've said many times, just the smallest thing to, you know, going to my own kitchen and seeing my mother there and have her help me prepare a meal, you know, right. the simplest things I, I yearn for. Um, so, you know, it is one of my greatest dreams, but like I said, we, we've dealt with this long enough and yeah. um, we love each other very much. And I think that we've been able to uh, be in this situation and just kind of deal with, with whatever comes our way. And we're gonna keep on doing that. <laughs> and, and through love and, and hope, and, and hopefully now with this book, I, I know that my relationship with my parents is stronger than ever. Um, so we'll see. Um, I would think as a mother, uh, I'd, be, I'd be dying to get on the next plane <laughs> to be back with, with well, my children. Yeah. Um, when, when the LA Times op-ed piece uh, came out, mm -hmm. um, you said that there were some haters. Yeah, well, you know. Well, what, 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 what was the criticism? I mean, just people saying, oh, well, they were here illegally. Yeah, yeah, yeah all that. Um, kind of, and, you know, and I wasn't, I think I was a little bit, I was a, a tiny bit discouraged only because I go, oh, no, it's embarrassing. People are going to think less of me. But I think as I read through the comments, I just started noticing that it was more misunderstanding mm -hmm. and and a, a lack of empathy, but only because I'm sure they don't know people who have gone through this. And that's why I've made it my mission to, I don't need everyone to agree with me. And I'm not a policy expert, but I do know what it is to be part of a family and, and have loving parents. And I, I do know my story very well. And I know that we had good intentions. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I just wanna bring uh, 
to light that we are human beings, that we were a real family that was separated. Mm -hmm. And w w regardless of where you are on the issue, you, ha you have to understand that there are real people, he we're human beings, mm -hmm. and it's not just a political issue. Yeah. That's so often the best way to tell a story, to yeah. make an issue come to life. And, uh, and, and you do that, and you, you, there's great humor in the book and, <laughs> and a lot of um, vivid e examples of the love um, among yeah. the members of your family. Now, what happened to you had effects uh, on you mm -hmm. as as a young person before you became uh, the success that that you are Thank now. You. It was tough. You talk about you talk about cutting in the book. You talk mm -hmm. about thinking of throwing it all away. How yeah. how bad was it? How dark? How dark did it get? Yeah, well, I, you know, it got it got very dark, um, and I think that's one of the. I think when I was writing the book and going through the process, I'd go, wow, there are so many issues here that I want to bring to light. There are so many things that um, that we are dealing with here. And it's not just, oh, my family was taken away. It's like, no, it's the psychological and emotional damage that occurs as well. And I know that it's not just me. I know that so many families that are separated are going through, through this mm -hmm. sort of trauma of you know, if you're not with your family and you can't be with your family and you are ripped away from everything that you know, you know, you feel hopeless. You feel like there's no reason to go on and especially young people who are left behind and um, are, are kind of navigating through life without their parents mm -hmm. and their guidance and their love. And, you know, so I, I, I went through a lot of, um, I had a lot of anxiety growing up, obviously. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as an adolescent you know trying to kind of hold it together mm -hmm. trying to stay in school trying to be focused and then so that sort of anxiety and pressure and depression sort of started seeping out and I dealt with it as best as I could um, and I talk about the importance of mental health in mm -hmm. in this book and as anybody anybody not any not just people who have gone through through through, through trauma but we all need it it's all it's all very important um, so, yeah. Yeah, the dark days are in here. But the then, dark days but, are here. But then there's the light, <laughs> and I, I, you have um, quotes at the beginning of the chapters, and, mm -hmm. and I love this one. You're talking about your, your eventual success, and you quote uh, the author Sandra Cisneros saying mm -hmm. uh, about your overnight success, <laughs> that it was the longest night, <laughs> the longest night ever. All right, right. There's no, right. There's no easy, easy path a lot of times in, in no. showbiz, but... Um, Orange is the new black. Was was that the big break? So oh, yeah. They came to you and said, "Here's a series on Netflix," right. and you said, "What?" Yeah, I'm like, what is that? what's Netflix? <laughs> what is that? Right, right, right. Well, it was so new to everyone. Right. We didn't understand what uh, you, you know uh, internet streaming was, or mm -hmm. you know, watching a full series online it's like right. what how does that work how does yeah. that work you know <laughs> uh, all we knew was you know actual network tv or um uh, cable tv so i i wasn't sure but i was just happy to audition you know but i mean I, and every actor will tell you you know the day you got that job was the day you were going to throw in the towel i was really going to throw that in the was towel. It. that was really the day you <laughs> well said? i was i was no i mean i was just doubting myself <laughs> at that point i had gone through the whole summer with no you know no gigs and yeah. uh no nothing and i had a conversation with my father and i just go you know i i bet i bet a prison show wouldn't even take me you know i <laughs> I was feeling so down, um, and my dad just told me to, you know, wh whether they do or you don't, the best thing to do is, is show up, and I think that's what I've been doing. I'm not, I, I won't pretend to be the best at anything, but I will say that I show up. <laughs> and I think as long as percent of success, as they say, if you show up, you know anything can happen. And something did happen that day, and um, and the folks at Orange were 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 gave me a chance and gave me a shot and um and i'm so 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 grateful now maritza and and the other characters are are they are you like a family off oh my air? gosh we are all a family we yeah. all can't get enough of each other <laughs> i've never seen i mean anything like it obviously it was my my first thing but um we are all like obsessed with each other <laughs> we're so supportive everyone yeah. as soon as the book came out all of my um, all of my castmates were posting, posting it up, and calling me with you know so many warm comments. And That's I think great. that I'm the show is also very social, um, mm -hmm. and it, um, it it makes a lot of social commentary. And it's it's a show that tells real stories and about real people and real women. Mm -hmm. um, 
and, and so I think that it's it's very fitting for me to be a uh, part of the show, and they've embraced me and my story, and um, something that I was really afraid of. You know, I, I was so afraid to to let people know who I was and what I had gone through. And mm -hmm. I think that um, the more I share the story, the more people can connect, um, and uh, uh, with a, with human beings. You know, it's it's a real story about a real family and a, about a real person. And now season four. And now season four. And uh, do you give away clues? Uh, or not really spoilers, but you send out emojis, right? And then the fans try to dissect that and say, oh, what does that mean? What's going to happen on Orange is the New Black? Sometimes we do that. Are you just messing with everybody? We're just messing with everyone. Yeah, we don't know what we we, like, we literally just push a bunch of emojis. No, we're really excited about this series. I think every season is so different from the last. And, um, and I think, you know, as you see in, in any show, every season just gets a lot better because mm -hmm. everyone's more comfortable with each other, everyone's more established in their characters. Mm -hmm. And I think that this season is no different. And it's my favorite, I'll say this time and time and again, this season is my favorite season. Have you said that every season? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but this one, I really, I'm, I, I think we all had a, a blast um, yeah. shooting it. Um, is there so. anything you can give us, a, like a, a tease for the upcoming season, something to look for without, without giving away any? Any spoilers um, or emojis? <laughs> any emojis. I, well, I have to say that um, uh, it, that it's going to get really wild. Okay. Okay. That's, That's a it. tease. <laughs> That's a tease. It's going to get wild in the women's it's prison. It's going to get okay. wild, yeah. I think exactly. people will tune in for that. I hope now, so. while you do this, do you shoot uh, Jane the Virgin simultaneously, or do you wait for one uh, for all the shooting to be done? Because you guys, you shoot Orange is the New Black in Astoria, Queens, right? In LA. That's right. LA is the, uh, the scene for, for, for Jane. Jane. Yeah. yeah. Um, we do it. it uh, Orange usually starts first. Like, I just finished uh, right. Jane now, and uh, Orange has been on hiatus. Now I start orange again in June um, so orange starts first and then towards the like August uh, Jane starts again so I shoot simultaneously oh, you so do. yeah I mean there's there's times where I like I'll so shoot on orange and then the next I'm taking a red eye to like LA so I can oh, make wow. set on time but it, you know it's all exciting for me I you know I came from a place where I had no work <laughs> so work is good, and I'm and I'm happy to be part of both shows. They're yeah. they're both so wonderful. I love all my castmates and um and and everyone who's who's part of who's part do of the thing. Do the scriptwriters accommodate that? Say like I know that I've watched. I, I I told you off air. I've seen every episode of Jane. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes like, well, where's Lena? You know, like oh, she, yeah. she's not in this episode. Is yeah. that because maybe you were busy sometimes with the other work. show? Yeah, because yeah. I mean, I'm and I'm recurring on both. I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. they need me. Sometimes they they don't. You yeah. know, um, I'm just I'm like I said, I'm just happy to be a part of it but um when i when i am on it it's it's just so much fun it's so much fun and i think the fans like it too i think they like they like the character the show is so funny yeah and it, it's almost like for anybody who hasn't watched it, it's almost like a parody of a mm -hmm. telenovela mm -hmm. right yeah and you know now since um I don't know if it's because of the success of Jane the Virgin, but now there's another series, uh, Eva Longoria, with a new telenovela. Do you think we're going to see more of that because of the uh, because of the success of Jane, or I don't know? Um, I don't know. I think Jane is very. It, it's just it's an, a thing all its own. You know, I don't think that. Um, I, I what I do what I do think is that I think we're going to see, be, like Jane the Virgin is interesting because it's. It's sort of it's a show who's showing the Latino is featuring the Latino family, right. and I think that a lot of the viewership is hungry for something like that. You yeah. know, hungry for for um, a, a diverse show and 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 different stories that that they're telling and seeing Latinos in a different light. Jane is a very dedicated, hardworking woman and um, who who's who's has her issues, who has her up and downs, but she has her faith. And I think we we comment a lot on on the Latino culture, and I think people like that. And know? she has her BFF. And she has Lina. her BFF. And Lina. and you're a little mischievous in the show. I now, am. What, what is like your favorite advice to, for Jane? Um, I think the best, the, what I give her always is to live her life and to, and to just live without regret and and you know, I always tell her, I'm like, this, the time is now. You mm -hmm. cannot, you know. I know you got artificially inseminated, and now you have a baby. <laughs> um, but you have to go out there and live your life, girl. Um, and I think my 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 biggest advice to her is always, have you had sex yet? Is that happening yet? Is that you know, anytime? But but then you know, the 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 title of the show, then what would happen then? So.
Um, but I keep, I, I keep pushing for that, yeah. even though I, I think um, in the end we'll find that Lena is maybe making everything up. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> how wild she is. She's probably not wild at all. I'll be tuning in for that wild okay. episode, to be sure. Now, as for you, um, movie projects on the horizon, uh, what else is going on? You said, you know, once, you, once the offers start coming in, you want to say yes, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But no, I, I mean, I audition just like every other actor. I'm still, I mean, I am hitting the pavement still, you know, yeah. I'm still out there and, and having, you know, people see me and see what I can do and showing them that I'm versatile and um, that I can tell different stories and that um, I that I have a big imagination. Um, so I'm, I, I do have a, f a few projects on the horizon, which I'm really excited for. I, I don't want to talk about it now because, okay. as you know, in showbiz, sure. you never know. You don't want to jinx it. I don't want to jinx it. I'm things always like change. in pins and needles. Understood. Yeah. But Understood. there are there are things in the works. I'm never done working, and um, this is what I love to do. And um, and every day is a new adventure, and every day is, is really exciting. And we talked about this um, before you were at the White House Correspondence Dinner. Got to mm -hmm. ask, ask you about that. Yeah. Um, and there's a, the funniest picture of you whispering into Bernie Sanders, and it, it just like it begs a caption. What, what were you telling right. Bernie Sanders? <laughs> well, like, I was just, you know, I was just, I was just, I happened to be near him, and I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm next to Bernie Sanders. Where am I not going to say anything? I'm usually Got so it. shy at these things, um, but I thought <laughs> it was really appropriate to just go ahead and go. Okay, Diane, here's your chance. Just say something. It's fine. You know, they're real people too, and um, so I was just telling him, uh, talking a little bit about immigration reform and how important it was to me, and he told me that it was an, a very important issue to him, and um, we were just kind of talking about the event, and we were like kind of both sweating, and there's like people tripping <laughs> over dresses. I think. Somebody stepped on my dress while I was oh, talking no. to him. He was like, "Yeah, you better be careful." And um, and so and somebody took that. Uh, my boyfriend took that picture okay. of, of me talking to him, and he's like, "He's like, yeah, there you go. You had to talk to Bernie Sanders. There you go. Now you can go home." Did so, he? Did he say, "Oh, I watched Orange Is Was he? Is he no. in Orange Is the New Black?" Fan, he didn't. Or? He didn't say. He didn't. Maybe say, he's a Jane the Virgin fan. I maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, it was. A, it was a very quick talk. He he was very busy. People people were. Yeah. Uh, 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 eager to talk to him. Yeah, such a crazy event now with the red carpet. I can't believe it. Years ago, it wasn't like that. But it uh, was insane, especially yeah. because it was um, uh, President Obama's last correspondence dinner. So I feel like it was a very hot ticket this year. Um, there were a lot of people there. The excitement was in the air. I've never seen anything like that. Um, I, I was just happy to be part of there. It was it was a bit historic in yeah. a way. So, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, so it was. it was it was very lovely, and I'm. I was just I was there with uh, Yahoo, and it was it was very okay. it was it was a lovely lovely event, great. for sure. Well, this is a lovely book. It's a, it's a great story in the country we love Diane Guerrero, and we can catch you in the new season of Orange Is the New Black. Yes, Jane the Virgin on to, uh, yeah tonight tonight yeah. tonight Jane the Virgin, and yeah. then new season of Orange uh, June seventeenth. I hope I said that right. <laughs> June seventeenth, uh, it'll it'll be released, so people right. can can tune in for that. People are are getting ready to to binge on that. <laughs> I know it. Thank you so much for coming oh, in, Diane. Thank you so great much. Great having you here. Great, great to be here. Thank you.